This Wimbledon 2024 has seen an absolute legend say goodbye to the game of tennis. And no, I'm not talking about Andy Murray. I'm talking about the man himself, Dustin Brown. A man that in very few matches at ATP level was able to captivate millions of tennis fans throughout the world. With an unorthodox style and an unpredictability in absolutely every shot he takes, many tennis fans agree that he's one of the most entertaining players of all time. And some of his matches are some of the most popular matches on YouTube. So many tennis fans know about his incredible style and him beating Nadal twice in the two encounters they had. But what not that many fans know is that Dustin Brown has one of the most incredible stories in his rise to the ATP Top 100. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the story of Dustin Brown. If you enjoy the video, it is of massive help if you can hit the like button. And to enjoy more tennis content of this style, consider subscribing to the channel to enjoy more videos like this one. We're not that far away from 100,000 subscribers, so every subscription at this point is massively appreciated. All of this said, let's get right into the story of Dustin Brown. So, our friend Dustin Brown was born in 1984 in Germany, son of a Jamaican father and a German mother. He started playing tennis at the age of 5. Being only 11 years old, him and his parents moved to Jamaica, where Dustin continued playing tennis. At age 17 is when Dustin would start playing Futures events in Jamaica, and already in his first year he would have very decent results, even making his first Futures final at the end of the year. In his second year in 2003, again he had solid results, but at the end of the season Dustin and his parents made the biggest decision of his career. At this point Dustin was ranked world number 545, only playing tournaments in Jamaica. The thing is, the tennis infrastructure there was not as developed as in Europe or the United States, so they arrived to the conclusion that playing only in Jamaica, it was very unlikely that Dustin would one day become a top 100 player. He was both practicing and playing against players that didn't have that level. So how was he gonna reach it one day? Here is where the biggest decision of his life came. The family decided to go back to Germany despite making a huge financial sacrifice as the cost of living in Europe was way above Jamaica and they barely had any money for Dustin to be a tennis player. They tried searching for financial support from the Jamaican Tennis Federation but that didn't work. So, how was Dustin gonna travel around Europe if they barely had any money? Well, here's where the incredible part of the story begins. The family decided to buy a van to both live and travel to the tennis tournaments all around Europe. This Volkswagen van right here. The investment that would actually make possible for Dustin to achieve his dream of being a tennis player. So it took him a few years, but 2009 was a breakthrough year for Dustin, who started the year as world number 493 and ended as world number 146, and also winning a decent prize money that would make traveling in better conditions possible. Dustin described in an interview that there were periods when they traveled in the van that they literally bought pasta for a whole month and that was all he took in that time. The expenses outside of tennis had to be completely minimized for him to be able to play. 2010 was the year Dustin made the top 100 and made his Grand Slam debut. This came at the US Open, where he won his first round match against Ramirez Hidalgo, and funnily enough, he faced Andy Murray in the second round. The squad outplayed him in straight sets, but Dustin captivated the crowd with some incredible shots and electric tennis. There's a few people in front of us, though they're already out of their seats. Oh, that is special. Well, he's got some lovely touches. Although he lost the match, he gained some fans that afternoon. But although he had a super attractive style that people wanted to watch, for the next couple of years, Dustin's ranking oscillated between world number 100 and 200. Just enough to not be on TV regularly and be one of the most popular players out there. In 2014, Dustin received a wildcard to play in Halle. At this point, he was ranked world number 85, and the previous year he proved that he was very dangerous on grass, coming through the qualifying draw of Wimbledon and taking out former world number 1 Leighton Hewitt. Nonetheless, at this point, very few people knew who Dustin Brown was, and after winning his first round match, here he was, facing the world number 1 Rafael Nadal in the center court of Halle. The world number one against the world number 85. 
a match that I'm sure was supposed to be an easy win for the Spaniard, but as you may know, it was far from that. Dustin absolutely shocked the tennis world, going god mode, and not only beating Nadal, but delivering one of the quickest losses of his entire career, beating him with a score of 6-4 and 6-1. A Nadal that came from winning Roland Garros was given a tennis lesson by this guy that was barely known, that had some very special looks, not very conventional for a tennis player, and with an incredibly aggressive style that looked to be massively risky in every single shot. You bet that this afternoon more than one tennis fan was shocked. But again, after this famous victory, his ranking was always oscillating between world number 80 and world number 140, so it's not like that many people were following his journey. So in 2015, after again coming through the qualifying draw of Wimbledon, in the second round, Dustin would face again Rafael Nadal, the man he had beaten just 12 months prior. But this time, he was meeting him in a Grand Slam. Events where these legends are 10 times harder to beat. But again, in god mode style, with his incredibly aggressive style, that left both the commentators and the crowd shocked, as again, a lot of people that were watching this match, were watching Dustin for their first time, and he proved again against Nadal that he was a unique talent. Hot shots everywhere, and a brand of tennis that was an absolute nightmare for Nadal, who ended up defeated in 4 sets. Newspapers all around the world, told the story of how this German hippie beat Nadal at the center court of Wimbledon, apparently coming from nowhere. Like I said before, one of the most famous tennis matches on YouTube, and a victory that so many people remember till this day. That victory ended up being by far the biggest highlight of his career, as Dustin reached a career-high ranking of world number 64, and unfortunately, injuries have limited him in the last few years of his professional career. Nonetheless, a great story that is surely worth covering and taking a look at it, as it's an example that dreams can come true, even coming from the absolute bottom. And despite not having that big of an ATP career, Dustin is one of those players that will be remembered for many many years. Some of his hot shots in challenger tournaments are absolutely mind-blowing. His skills on the tennis court are something taken out of a movie, and the guy is an absolute genius in his own way. So this was the story of Dustin Brown, the man who lived in a van, and just a few years later he was beating Nadal in the center court of Wimbledon. If you enjoyed the video, as I said before, it is of massive help if you hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more original tennis content of this style. All of this said, I hope I can see you all in my next video. Peace!